Hey guys, so today I'm in Modica. Modica's an old city that's been around for over 2,000 years. Where exactly is Sicily, you may ask? Well, it's at the south end of Italy, traditionally characterized as a football off the toe of Italy. It's had so many influences throughout the history. The Greeks, the Spanish, the Jews, the Christians. It's, it's such an interesting place. So what you saw just behind me was St. Peter's. It's a UNESCO heritage listed church and the architecture is a result of these different historical influences. Right now, I'm going to see this guy Pier Paolo at a chocolate shop called Bonaiuto. Morica's really renowned for its artisanal sort of chocolate making. I'm gonna go check it out and see what it's like. Hopefully do some taste testing. <laughs> G'day, my name's Tak. I've quit my full-time job and followed my heart and stomach to Italy, a place where I always wanted to film traditional Italian food and produce. It's a self-funded passion project, so it's just me and my camera. No other camera crew. Bit raw in parts, but eh, delicious. Along the way, my Sicilian mate Salvo joined me as a translator. He owns and manages Convivio Pizzeria in Sicily and is nutty about good food as I am. A Japanese-American Aussie in Italy? And you're not even a chef? Just a nobody? Well, that's exactly why you should stick around. Here's my story. Andiamo a mangiare. I'm excited to meet Pier Paolo because the Morica chocolate is a bit different from the ones we used to. It's a result of the Spanish who ruled Morica in the 16th century. During this time, they bought chocolate to Morica. My Sicilian mate Salvo is a bit busy today, so it's a solo trip. No chocolate for him. Ciao, Pier Paolo. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie. <laughs> bene, bene. Can you tell me um, how long you have been doing this for? I was born here. Yeah. <laughs> and the sixth generation of this family uh -huh. that started to work with this kind of chocolate. For me, chocolate is the smell of my grandfather. Uh -huh. I love how romantic that is. For me, it's the smell of rice wine vinegar with bean curd skin and rice that reminds me of my mom making nari sushi pieces. I have a sweet spot for it. Antica Dolceria Bonaiuto dates back to the 1880s. Their chocolate is a dairy-free dark chocolate in the old Aztec style. Chocolate is derived from cocoa seeds. What you see now is a dried up cocoa pod and inside are the seeds. The seeds are uh, first harvested, then fermented, then they sun dry, then they roast. After the roasting is the grinding. In the olden days, they used a stone grinder called metate for this. With just a little bit of fire under uh -huh. the stone and grinding the seeds by hand. The stones reach about 40, 40 uh. degrees. The family used the metate till the 1960s. Check out young Pier Paolo on the job. What makes Bonaiuto and Morica chocolate unique compared to other European chocolate is the temperature of this process. We talk about uh, a cold processed chocolate because usually we work at about 45 degrees during all the process. So, let's clarify. The two types of methods are cold processing and conching. Bonaiuto and Morica chocolate use the cold processing technique. Other chocolate makers use the conching technique. Conching processes the cocoa mass at about 80 degrees instead of 45 degrees Celsius. The Bonaiuto and Modica chocolate use a lower temperature so the texture is grainier. There's a good reason for this. Now we know that about 430 different flavors from the seeds disappear during conching. What we are trying to preserve are the original flavors from the seeds. Because the mixture has been processed at 45 degrees, the chocolate hasn't quite melted to the point of liquid. Hence, the grainy texture which you can see. The smell of the chocolate is very strong and very yeah. appetizing. Yeah, we have only three ingredients, cocoa mass, yeah. sugar and just a little bit of cinnamon. The shaking helps mold the chocolate and gets rid of the air bubbles trapped inside the mixture. You see the shiny texture of the surface now? This is what it looked like before. And now. After the shaking, the chocolate goes into the fridge for an hour and then it's done. Now, if you want, you can taste. I'm being polite on the outside, but inside, fireworks are going off. Yes, please. It will first fill the sugar and then the aromatic part of the cocoa. So it's more intense. It's like a musical note that just goes yeah. Yeah. the whole yeah. time, yeah? Just to clarify tech language, the taste of the chocolate is more intense and pure of cocoa than normal chocolate, so it lingers in the mouth longer. Bliss! In terms of flavors, there's a whole range. There's lemon, chili, orange, marjoram, salt, some high percentage chocolate flavors. Nothing out of the norm except for one very unusual flavor. 
One of the, the craziest things, we invented a nori, seaweed, mm. and a tuna egg fish. Yep, you heard right. Seaweed and tuna egg chocolate. This is actually my favorite, and I'm not telling a Donald Trump white lie. That's true. I'm not getting paid to say this. The tuna egg is botarga, cured tuna roe. It's got the saltiness to it, and the nori seaweed gives it a very subtle crunch. In Japan, we also have botarga, which is called karasumi. Though, I've never heard of anyone crazy enough to put it in chocolate. The nautical flavor for the chocolate was inspired by how the original cocoa seeds traveled across the sea to Sicily back in the olden days. Hence the seaweed and tuna egg flavor. It's a touch of poetry, Italian romance. Experiments never stop. Working with tradition doesn't mean that you have to stop. Respecting the past but forging a new path for the future. Who knew chocolate can provide such great life lessons? Forrest Gump was right. Life is like a box of chocolates. Terrible impersonation tack. Thanks to Pier Paolo and the Bonaiuto stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please like it and share it with your friends. The project is 100% self-funded and it'll only spread with your help. Word of mouth. Thanks.